Hello everybody, we have just finished filming a day of RPGs, but we had about half an hour left in the studio and we thought, hey, let's play. Well, this video might be going live before, way before any of that stuff. Yeah, so. we can still tease that we were playing We RPGs. can, and we just did. <laughs> da, 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 oh, man. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I am Mark Humes, I run the YouTube channel Tabletop Weekly, and I'm also the Dungeon Master for High Rollers, which is a regular D&D channel on, uh, D&D stream on Twitch. Mark is a distressingly good GM, as we found out, and you will find out in the coming weeks. I'm <laughs> Pip. I am, um, shall I say, I'm a friend of the show. Sure. <laughs> friend of the show. You're not an enemy of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I am an acquaintance of the show. <laughs> Whoa. And here <laughs> is a game that is another friend of the show. Uh, the metagame is something we have designed an expansion for, and we thought, hey, let's do a cheeky Let's Play, because mm -hmm. yeah. it's really good, and we've never done one, and we probably should have given it more coverage. Uh, yeah, so and it's a game that it does help to see playing it to get an idea of the fact that actually it's brilliant. I'm excited. So if you look at your hand of cards now, you're going to have five things, which uh, the people at home will see are all amazing. Things like Google. <laughs> There's a card. Um, and now what we're going to be trying to do is we're going to be trying to make a quilt. So we're going to be taking it in turns to build a kind of grid of opinion cards, like which better captures the zeitgeist of its time. And then every card surrounding an opinion card will have to be a white culture card. Mm -hmm. And then we can also attach the um, opinion cards from our hands to culture cards. So we're just going to make a big, beautiful grid. Got ya. On your turn, you're going to pick uh, one card from your hand to expand the grid in some way. Mm -hmm. So like I might say, um, what better captures the zeitgeist of its time? Oh, I'm going to play the AK-47 assault rifle. I think that captures the zeitgeist of its time in, a, in a horrible way. <laughs> I, I just top decked this. This isn't cynical. But if you want to this play, is bleak. <laughs> if you want to play which has the most empty calories, then you would have to play it somewhere that it would fit both. So in this case, you have to say Google and an AK-47 assault rifle both have the most empty calories. At which point another this player... This stops making sense as soon as you... <laughs> top decking, it doesn't really work with that. But the point of that though is that then another player could go, actually no, that is that rubbish. Is nonsense. And someone else, one other player can challenge with a card from their hand that they think it's better. Mm -hmm. Once they do that, it goes into a very small uh, micro debate. <laughs> like you, you get, you can just pitch why your card is mm -hmm. the better choice. Other players then vote, and the correct card gets put into the quilt. Okay. Object of the game is to lose ten cards. However, at the end of your turn, if you've just put a card into the quilt, you get to discard as many cards as there were cards touching your slot. So if you manage to. If there are four cards and you oh. put it in the middle, so you've got the perfect card for that one slot, you get to discard four cards. But if you just build onto the end, which is easy, you only discard one. That's, yeah, that's really clever. And it's if a you game. challenge and fail, do you have to pick up cards? Yep, if you challenge and fail, you have to pick up a card and uh, that's it. And that's it. The fun thing as well that we tend to house rule with this is that when you put down a card, you don't have to explain why. Mm -hmm. until someone challenges you. Yeah. Which has an element of being like, that doesn't make any sense to me, but maybe they're going to have the best really excuse in the world. Oh, love it. Okay, uh, sounds great. Uh, Let's go. I'm go there's, um, so with some of my oh, some of them have blanks? word cards, they either have blanks or they're questions that don't seem to fit that specific way of playing. We'll work, you'll find out. You'll, for, for, yeah. for blanks, um, you, fill it in, what it is. you fill it in when you put the card down there. Okay. So I've got, I, I'll start the game by putting Sparks blank among friends. I'm gonna say Sparks loathing among friends. What makes thing, people loathe things? Uh, and that then stays the word that I stated for the rest of the game. Okay. Okay, but I've placed down a card uh, and that's the end of my turn and now we okay. go to Mark. So. I would ideally have to play a white card because there's no way I can't exactly. fit in a yeah. game. So I'm going to put uh, this down. Labradoodles. <laughs> can fine. I challenge that because you that seems can. so it, unlikely? And it's whoever, so you've got to card. replace it with something else. What have you got? It's if you think you've got something better. Cigarettes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So starting with uh, Mark, why does the Labradoodle well, spark clothing among friends? Because do dogs are man's best friends, and at the end of the day, Labradors are the better dog. Yeah. Poo nobody likes poodles, but apart from you, you get the occasional weirdo who like might like a poodle, and so they try and excuse the Labradoodle as the best of both worlds. But friends, no, they, you, people hate Labradoodles, and anybody that says they like a Labradoodle will be shunned. That is an argument. Uh, it is, that it exists. is an argument. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a trial by learning. It's, mm. This is ridiculous, but also um, so it, we're arguing with do friends hate man's best friend, <laughs> literally man's best friend, or do they hate 
cigarettes that will kill them. I see where you're coming from. <laughs> so, nice. now it goes to a vote between Matt and I. There are no counter arguments. Uh, so, who do you think is one, three, two, one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah okay, exactly. so that's, that's, that's that one. fair. So, now you are going to draw an additional opinion card. Yeah. And one, one. Dogs or cigarettes? <laughs> and, it was uh, like, mm. Dogs, cigarettes. Welcome to the meta game. Uh, so, now Pip, because you put a card into the quilt that touches one other card, you can discard one extra thing from your hand. Oh, cool. Now, I guess to uh, Matt's turn. Okay. Uh, uh, so I just, it can be it a can question, or yep. that's the one that was confusing me. I am going to go for most. It sparks loathing amongst friends. That's correct. I'm going to go for the Speedo bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, no one likes a friend in Speedos, but yeah, so in the cinema. I'm not going to challenge it. I'm not going to challenge it. Oh, uh, no, that seems reasonable. Uh, Matt gets to discard a card. Okay. And it's Pip's turn. Um, I think I'm going to try this. So what the is that thing song? everyone loves to hate. Damn, to son. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm not going to compete because I feel like it's quite good. <laughs> it is pretty good. God, it seems such a good fit. Like <laughs> cigarettes being argued, like alone amongst friends. Okay, I'm going to speedo bathing suits. I am going to say. That it could have been designed by a child. <laughs> um, oh, and because uh, remember, if you add a card, you can discard. So you added one card, you got one. So, okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna challenge that. Oh god, oh, Matthew, okay. Matthew, Matthew. I'm gonna Hang challenge. On, I, oh, oh. Sorry, I don't know if I get to discard anything. All right, I'm gonna challenge that with hopelessly revealing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean. This is the difficulty of being challenged with blank cards, but they're quite good. <laughs> I mean... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to argue against yours. I'm just going to say that uh, what is interesting about the Speedo bathing suit isn't just that it's revealing. Like, we all know that it's revealing. I think what's interesting is how could you... How could, any, how could it be designed in the first place, right? It's not, oh, it's revealing. That's not interesting about the Speedo. What's interesting about the Speedo is how could it have been made when everyone who looks at it feels nauseated instantly? <laughs> like, bearing in mind also, it comes out of an era when swimsuits are like, not revealing, not revealing, not revealing. Holy shit, what's going on? I think that is the more interesting thing to say about the Speedo. It's a functional piece of design, isn't it? It's for tanning, it's for speedy swimming, if you shave your legs as well. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's, uh, I think to say that the Speedo swimming suit, uh, and whilst it may be a ridiculous item and a much... Uh, berated, I think. I think to suggest that the speedo, an iconic piece of design, could have been designed by a child. I think that's, uh, <laughs> very I think that's very offensive. Yeah. Okay. Personally. Right. So for you two to vote, three, two, one. Oh, so oh. it's split, which means challenger loses. Oh. Fair. Okay. Interesting. Oh, thank so goodness for that. Do I keep this and draw, draw more? Or what do you I do? discard what you played. Yeah. And then you're going to draw, draw two, two. Yeah. from either deck. Okay. Um, and I played one card into the court, which is good. So I'm going to discard four thirty three because. It's a, I don't want to talk about it because it already annoys me. <laughs> 433 is a musical track that is four minutes and 33 seconds of silence. It's not silence, is it, though, technically? Because it's the sound It's of... whatever noise is ambient to the performance. <laughs> I'm sure glad that I don't have to talk about it anymore. <laughs> I could it's got... here. <laughs> <laughs> Philippa War. <laughs> Sparks my face. Sparks I'll just put my driving license here. So, <laughs> with the blank ones, I choose what the yes. blank word is, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put this one down next to Speed of Bathing Suit, and it is symbol of the douchebag lifestyle. <laughs> wow. <sighs> well, we've established, I believe, that the Speedo is uh, worn by people who just want to go really fast. <laughs> I'll argue with that. You can argue with Damn that. It. No, I don't know. You know what? No, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about Speedos anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You let me think about I'm it for so with long. Speedos. I am going to say that a uh, symbol of the, the douchebag lifestyle and sparked loathing amongst friends is something hopefully in the year 2017 we can all agree on. Enron. <laughs> <laughs> Um, basically, those who don't know, is taking creative accounting to new heights. It was a scandal ridden American energy corporation that basically was uh, the original corporate scumbags of, uh, of our generation, anyway. Oh, I've got a card that's a pretty good fit. Oh! Snap, okay. I'm not going to argue with it. Okay. I don't think I can. So, Matt discards two cards. And we go to Pip. 
I am going to try to connect a tufa as well. Don't um, go for the slot I'm looking at. I'm going over here with skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> Sparks loathing among friends and could have been made by a child. I'm going to challenge that. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got something better. I'm going to put the Hunger Games. Oh, throwing oh. shade on skateboards and, <laughs> and children's books. Non-adult <laughs> novels. All right, Pip, what you got? Well, I mean, to start with, mine literally says it's for tweens on the card and yours says young adults. <laughs> so, made by a child, mm, kind of contradicted by the card itself. Um, also, young people are pretty much the only ones that can do skateboarding. And uh, I hate them, and so do all of you. <laughs> I, I, you all hate them too. Are you I finished? Hate the young. And I really love the Hunger Games, so. <laughs> okay, well, first off. Are you saying we're not friends? I'm saying that. <laughs> Sparks loathing among friends. Are you friends with any skateboarders? Also, there's the, a reason the Hunger with Games the loathing clue. <laughs> <laughs> the Hunger Games is literally a story about people who are friends who come to loathe each other. I believe Katniss and him who is a baker have some incredibly complicated feelings because of the Hunger Games. But they get through it because friends. It sparks it's loathing. It doesn't say friends. sparks loathing that never that, ends. That's a good point. It does. The Hunger Games themselves do spark loathing amongst friends. There you go. Also, could have been made by a child. Come on, there is some extremely basic prose in the Hunger Games and some very questionable plotting in the second and third. But that's all books. <laughs> I feel that the Hunger Games is not... I read it as well and enjoyed it, but I finished right, it and went... there you go. That is not... That's... Lots of things get made by child children that I like, such as smiles. <laughs> <laughs> that was my ejector seat balls. <laughs> it's, it's becoming evident that you just hate children. <laughs> okay, right, let's vote. All right, all right. <laughs> Three, two, one. No! <laughs> Sorry, I'm very... F I'm, I mean, admittedly, the second and third book have bit major wobbles, but I'm very fond of them. Yeah, okay. I don't think it sparks loathing. So, well, it, um, yeah, it skateboard goes, skateboarding's worse, I think. Pip discards. You just got two? Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Enron and Marlboro cigarettes, I will say, go great with a beer and a hot dog. <laughs> The American dream. Tax evasion and death. <laughs> You're giving me ideas. Oh, I kind of... Do I? Oh, I just know I'm going to lose. Um... You don't know that. I'm not feeling fond of quins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... Oh, no. The meta meta game. I'm going to try this. This is a risky gamble. Oh, don't make me work again. <laughs> uh, with uh, what sh should be required in school. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Go on. Oh, Which I'm, I'm elements going first. of Enron? <laughs> well, I, are you going to go first? I have to. Okay, you have to go first. <sighs> okay, goes best with a beer and a hot dog. It's like Matthew said. The phrase goes best with a beer and a hot dog doesn't mean literally beer and hot dogs. It means uh, don't shake your head. I haven't even started. <laughs> I know, yeah, I'm annoyed that I gave you ammunition. That was my plan. <laughs> that's why I put it down. Beer and a hot dog is, a, is an American phrase. We don't even have beer and hot dogs in the same way. You'd have to buy them from two separate shops and then combine them in England. So I'm talking about America and what could be more American than Marvel cigarettes, obviously, and what could be more American than Enron, especially in the 21st century where it's become clear the American model of late stage capitalism, as exemplified by Enron with corporations running amok, is the most American thing. My card is a... It's, uh, you know, a metaphor. Let's go. What you got? <laughs> Mine is not a metaphor, but it is not necessarily the meaning of it should be required for positive reasons. They should be required as teachings of ways to avoid the, you know, ridiculous scamming of companies in the future, teaching people how to avoid this kind of thing. Because it's not just schools, it can be in high school, it can be in college as well. Both gone for abstractions. And <laughs> Marvel cigarettes, it's, it's teaching horrible, that horrible, cigarettes are not cool. It is, you know, it's, it should be required in schools to teach that cigarettes are not you know, they are dangerous and not cool for you to enjoy. Yeah, okay. I feel like you've both gone for abstraction. <laughs> so I have to... Three, two, one... Uh, really? Oh, yeah. Dude, I would have voted for you. <laughs> I thought I had... I thought well, you... No, you you abstracted it and I, as you were both went for abstractions, it was like, I kind of... Matt voted for himself. <laughs> <laughs> it was the... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not going to try and overexert myself because I'm not very good so far. I'm going to say professional wrestling goes great with oh, 8 oh, I mean, That's sure. reasonable. <laughs> so now you can discard a card? And now I can discard a card. Okay, right. Um, here we go, Matthew. This is an obvious one, but I'm just going to say, what goes best with a beer and a hot dog? Medical marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy the card on this one. It says side effects may include dry mouth, loss of short term memory, and dry mouth. <laughs> it's very funny. It's very funny. That is very good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's so good. That's, that's so good. The uh, thing that everyone loves to hate and the symbol of the douchebag lifestyle. And what's the I, card I, there, Pip? The moustache. The moustache. Yeah. I, I, there is nothing. Like, I, I just had to check and look at your two beards. Like, and be like, <laughs> I just don't like shaving. I wish, I, wish, I wish this was a style choice. I just realised I could just not do it as often. What's the what's the what's the fancy word for lying? Um, Chicanery. Deception. Decep- but it's like one of the Ten Commandments, or like the Seven Deadly Sins, the sin of misdirection. <laughs> Thou it's shalt not illusion. Okay. Well, best embodies the sin of lying. Professional wrestling and Enron. <laughs> oh man. Oh, so hang on. Oh, Do I mean, get um... to discard two cards? Yes. So. Oh. oh what about we were having too much wow. fun? <laughs> I had some good stuff. I thought you were going to like challenge me. I had some great cards. Me. I just couldn't <laughs> figure out how to use. I had a card for the actual the meta game. <laughs> <laughs> should we do? Should we use just a few more minutes? Yeah, let's do it. Sure. One more round the table. See this, is, second. this is. I mean, yeah. This every time I play this, it ends and it's like that. Oh, but yeah. I would, but Usually we like to play again, but we'll play. We'll play back round to Pip. <laughs> yeah. So Pip, do you want to just have some? There you go. Have some cards. There you go. Uh, you've won. You've won. You've but won. We're now we're playing. It's, for fun. it's over. <laughs> So best embodies the sin of... You're just not recognising my victory, are you? No, no. The UN of this table does not recognise the nation of Pip. (laughs) Well, I'm going to play this one down because otherwise I'm not going to get a chance. Best uh, embodies the sin of lying, Dungeons and Dragons. Whoa! It's nothing but lies. It doesn't even exist. It's exactly. It's 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 make-believe. It's literal fiction. I mean, I think... I'm just going to go for, I mean, it's difficult to play this one because I think I'm, I'm just more open-minded than I used to be. And so I'm looking at the ball and going, no, that's fine. No, that's fine. No, 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 no. But this is, well, would make the strangest fetish ever. <laughs> and like skateboard and, and cigarettes. It's like, no. <laughs> cigarettes and mar- no. I'm going to go for the combination of Dungeons and Dragons and professional <laughs> wrestling. Being, <laughs> as a combination, I think oh, that's, you think that's so? kind of a strange fetish, I think. I just want to let that fly because I want to play with that card. <laughs> I, I'm going to try and challenge this one. I can't want to see Matt argue for this. <laughs> with, if you don't know this, you are culturally challenged. Ooh. <laughs> Matthew? I think that, well, Let's I talk think, about sex. Well, I think that's true. I think that, uh, I think that if somebody whispers gently into your, your ear that, that, that they want you to dress up as a halfling bard and then they will dress up as a, uh, a level 8 wizard and then you will... Uh, <laughs> Perform a an elbow drop off a top rope onto them uh, as a means of. So who's this? Do you have that number? <laughs> I... uh, it's it's me. <laughs> I thought for a minute you were going to say. You... <laughs> I, thought... <laughs> I thought for a second you were going to say get them to dress up as a halfling bard and then you dress up as Randy Savage or something. Like, that. <laughs> I thought, like some sort of weird crossover. Yeah, mix. I mean that's it. I mean it could go so many ways. It could involve rolling a d twenty to then see how long they're pinned for. Uh, I think. It's can you smell what the rock is cooking? Critical miss. Well, the thing is, is I feel like we've just done professional wrestlings and Dungeons and Dragons together. This is I don't all think it was. Look well, yeah, yeah, look forward to. And I don't think it was a weird fetish thing. I think it was a lovely, jolly what, good was that, time. Was that sexy for you? <laughs> no, I'm saying I it was. Exactly, it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't. So it's nice, you know, cultural thing. You know, it's just a lovely. So you're saying time. it would be weird if it was. <laughs> 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 no, perfectly normal because it happens all the time. Should we vote? <laughs> but culturally, <laughs> yes. both of them are very important and have existed for decades. You could get your argument. And they're all it's like TV on Netflix, both shows. <laughs> Netflix, big cultural icon. Thumbs up. Reach that part of the argument. Oh, really? Television. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We've all been there. <laughs> just like, I just keep saying words. <laughs> Three, two, one. 
Yeah! It's fair play. It was tenuous at best. <laughs> it's tenuous. I mean, I was just imagining if someone was like, you know, you're like, oh, you know, like in professional wrestling, and they're like, what's that? Yeah. You'd be like, what's professional wrestling? You don't know <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> Up until a few years ago, Dungeons and Dragons, I would have been like, yeah, that's understand the people. Man, Satanic that. Panic in the 80s, I don't know how. Yeah, that's, that's true. Lasers, that's true. Tom Hanks. What's that? Have you ever heard it's, uh, so it's a movie Tom Hanks did, which is about like a guy who gets into a D&D game and gets like taken in by a cult. It's like this famous like, an- really? like Christian sort of anti-D&D movie that got like spread around during the 80s. Wow. Uh, it's like a big part of like, the Have DC history it? thing. I've seen clips of it because it's really hard to track down now. It is awful. <laughs> and then Tom <laughs> Hanks did a thing where he would turn into a child and play with toys. What a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> do you like toys or do you hate them? Make your mind up. Make your mind up. <laughs> Pip, what's happening in uh, Winners the nation town. of Pip? That's quite dull. If you don't know, the Sopranos. Well, you've already won, so you've stopped trying. Challenged. I know, but I can double win <laughs> if no one challenges. Fine, after. I'll challenge That's this. Oh. If you do- so, <laughs> I'd like to hear your argument for this. So, if you don't know the Sopranos, you're culturally challenged. I would argue that if you don't know about the space shuttle, <laughs> you are more culturally challenged. I'd love to hear your argument. <laughs> Do you think that the space shuttle is scientific or cultural? Cultural. Oh. Both. Oh. Oh. Why don't you just say... make your argument and then I'll... <laughs> For the Sopranos. Well, I would say that the Sopranos is hailed as one of the uh, televisual touchstones of our time. It is a high watermark in the uh, visual arts, the cultural sphere, if you will. <laughs> Whereas the space shuttle is a big old space shuttle... Fueled by science. Is the, cultural, <laughs> is the cultural sphere just Earth? Is that what it's called? It's a big bubble. <laughs> Around Earth. Okay, so two points. Ozone. So you're still in culture as long as you're in the ozone. So the space shuttle orbits I get it. the ozone. I get it. <laughs> okay, well yes. first off, I mean I can make the obvious that argument. The point you were going for? <laughs> the space shuttle high. isn't high. I don't I feel boring even. I feel as boring as you did putting the Sopranos down. Uh, the space shuttle isn't important because of what it achieves, which is going into orbit. The space shuttle is important because it represents uh, humans trying to get into space for absolutely no reason because it's a cultural event. Because the Russians and the Americans weren't racing to get into space for, I mean, really any massive scientific gain. They were doing it because it was important culturally. So, of course, you are culturally judge if you don't know. Also... And scientifically. Sopranos hasn't aged that well. <laughs> Sopranos, like The Wire, bizarrely, if you go back and watch The Wire now, you're like... Actually, all of these lessons have been absorbed by television. Now this looks a lot shonkier than I remember. <laughs> Sopranos is similar. It was massively important at the time, but you go back and you watch it, and you're like, "This is, this is, a, this is, this is not as good as it used to be." It's a fact. Well, speaking of something, I've never seen Sopranos, so I have no. Let I'm me tell you, I've never seen it. You're not culturally challenged, Matthew. Yeah. I'm not. Three, two, one. Sorry, Pip. I think I mean, space travel is my, maybe more I've culturally significant. I've never seen significant. The Sopranos either. Whoa! <laughs> I've only seen about three episodes. <laughs> well, somebody on the internet is going to have to get an OBE then, because none of us can. <laughs> Most upvoted comment is... <laughs> I'm mad at you like a gangster because it's a gangster television show. Sure. <laughs> bow, 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 you're dead. That's the noise, that's the catchphrase of the Sopranos television show. <laughs> pow, pow, pow. You're I'm dead. dead. So we're doing a Kickstarter at the moment for an expansion that we've we've made with these guys. We, we've done an expansion about games. Basically, it's a, it's a lot like Monica's. It's basically one of those things. We got involved with this because we really liked it, but mm. then we kind of realised when we were putting together our side of it that we're like, oh, we've never actually really properly talked or shown why we really like it. Yeah. So we thought it might be a good idea to just do that now rather than being like, hey, use your imagination. But there is a, a free print and play version as well. So just, oh, nice. just get that. Uh, if you want to play this, you can go to metaga.me. What are we saying in the Kickstarter video? If you have some scissors and a printer and a friend and are willing to combine all three, yeah. <laughs> you can be playing this uh, 10, 10 minutes, minutes from now. It's really good. I like it. I love the grid system. I like the way that it all plays in. But yeah. yeah, like we say, if you get this and then you like MetaQuilt, that's just one of, I think there are 10 total different Oh, wow. Games. And they're oh, pretty nice. varied as well. Like, there's a lot of variation there. Mm. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Check it out. We're not chilling, but it's pretty cool. If you like the look of it, Live your life. <laughs> Have fun. Have a nice time. Maybe watch The Sopranos on television. Uh, Matthew, well done on your win for winning the, the game. <laughs> Thanks very much. I really, I really, I, I did really did win hard. Uh, didn't you win as well? I think I did. I think Mark won as well. Yeah. All winners. All winners. Thanks, Thanks, great guy. Thanks, Thanks for man. joining us, Pips. Symbols of the douchebag lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It's great. Deserved.